So I got this next idea from a student, which I think is really cool. I like it when you guys have, you know, your own input into how you can make games better. And one thing that you commonly see is in video games is instead of having a counter at the screen up here that counts the number of lives, what about having images where instead of having a three, you saw like one, two, three little ships up here. And every time you got shot, you lost one of those. That's something we can do, and it's not too hard to do it. So what we're going to do is we are going to make another actor. And the actor is going to be called, um, we'll call it, I don't know, Life Ships. Not the best name I've ever come up with, but we'll use it. Um, and I'm going to use the image for a ship. Now, if you're thinking, why didn't you just, you know, make another hero, you know, put heroes up there? Well, the reason is because we don't want to control the hero with the keys and we don't want to be, to shoot. If we put heroes on the screen up here, then, um, you know, when we hit left and right, they would all move and they would all shoot and everything. And we don't want that. So we're going to make another class called Life Ships. And it's just going to have the same image, which is totally fine. And now we're going to go into our level one code. And instead of adding hero life count like this, we are going to, actually, I don't need to take the whole thing out. What I'm going to do is put a new um, life ship. Is that what I called it? Life ship? I don't know why I put a plural on that. Never call your classes plural because I only want to make one life ship. So life ship is what I want to do there. Um, and two brackets. And what you're going to see on the screen here, yeah, that's fine. What we see is an image. We haven't scaled it yet. And so we've got it the way we want it. We want it to put a, a ship up here. And what I want to do is make a constructor. So public life ship. Remember constructors, the name of this method is going to be the same as the name of the class. And in here, I'm just going to scale it. So I'm going to put get image dot control space scale. And I'm going to scale it to be quite small. Let's go take a look what the hero is. So the hero is 30 by 25. So I want these guys to be even smaller. So let's go 20 by, uh, I don't know, 17. Let's see what happens when we do that. There we go. Okay. Little, I don't know. I want it to be a little, well, not quite as tall. So I'm going to go back to life ship. Let's go 20 by 15. I won't be too much of a perfectionist here, but that's a little better. Okay. Um, so these are going to show how many lives we have left. Now I can change the picture later, make them a different color if I want to, um, if, if I wanted to, if I don't like the look of that. And what I don't like is it's starting a little too far over. And so I'm going to put it closer to this side, which means that I'm going to alter the X coordinate here. Let's make that a 20. Okay, there we go. That's a little better. Um, and we'll move it up a touch. Maybe 15. Okay, good. So that's great, except we start the game with three lives, not one. So how do we make three of these appear? And what we want to do is go into our level one, and we're going to want to do this again and again and again. And you want to ask yourself, how many times do you want to do it? Well, you want to do it however many lives there are. So we want to think about where we give lives. And so in Hero, Maybe when the game starts, what we should do is say, okay, well, the hero is the one who has lives. Let's start the lives of the hero at three. Okay. And every time the hero gets hit by a bullet, now instead of that hero life count thing we had, we want to make this value go down by one. So in the enemy bullet, Here's the enemy bullet. And what you're going to see is that it's still referring to hero life count. Now, if I go back here 
and I know we don't need the hero life count anymore. So I'm gonna take it completely out of the code and that's gonna break a bunch of stuff and that's okay. I'm gonna go to enemy bullet and now it says, wait a minute, I don't know what hero life count is anymore because you just deleted it from existence. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, that's okay. It's the hero that has lives. And so here's code that detects if the enemy bullet hit a hero. If it did, the hero is stored as H. So what I'm going to do is type H dot, and I'm going to hit control space. And this is all the stuff that the hero has. You see it has a move value, shot, interval, and what you notice is there's lives. And I'm going to say I want the hero's lives to decrease by one. And that code right there, the two minus signs, that's a shortcut to say I want to decrease a value by one. Okay, all we're doing is we're changing an integer value, right? If you look at hero, remember, this is an integer value, and we're just going to decrease it by one. If it turns out that the value of h dot lives is zero, well then we want to go to lose world. And so all we're really doing is replacing the name of that counter, hero life count, with h lives. And now we should be somewhat back in business here. So if we run this code, I should get hit. Don't ignore that one ship in the corner. If I get hit three times, I should still die. So let's see if we can. There's one, two, three. See, it worked. So we're still working. The lives are working based now on this lives counter, or this not counter, sorry, this lives integer value that's built into the hero. So the hero has three lives. So how do I make it appear on the screen? Well, what I'm going to do is go back here to level one. And on level one, this is where I'm putting that those life ships, right? What I want to do is I want to be able to refer to the hero's life count. So I'm going to write a loop. Don't forget, a loop does things again and again and again. And if I haven't said it already, by the way, X does not have anything to do with the X, Y coordinates or the X, you know, the get X, get Y. X is just the name of a variable. I could have chosen N or Z or anything else at all. And if I do this, just to show you how this is going to work, if I were to do something like this where I make a loop and I say I want to do something five times. So this loop here that I've written says let's put five life ships on the screen. Watch what happens when I click. It doesn't look like there's any more than five, but they're all stacked on top of each other. So I've made the mistake where I need to space them out. So here, they're gonna start at 20 in the X coordinate, 15 in the Y coordinate. I wanna space them out by about 10 pixels each. And the way I do that is I add 10 times X as we go through the loop. I should see five ships now. Okay, great. Now 10 obviously isn't enough to space them out by. So I go back into my world and I say, let's make this a 20. There we go. That looks pretty good. Maybe a little more spacing, but we get the idea. Okay, so now it looks like I have five lives. So that's great, except I don't want five what I want is the number of lives. Now when the game begins, don't forget this is the constructor of the game, I would be okay to put a three here because three is the number of lives that we have to start the game. But I'm gonna have to update this once in a while, right? I have to update it when? I need to update it every time I lose a life. So I have to think where in the code do I lose lives? Well, that's in the enemy bullet. So here, if the enemy bullet hits a hero, we decrease the number of lives. And then what we're gonna have to do is right away, figure out how we can change the number of, of life ships on the screen. So right here, what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna take all of the life ships off the screen. So the reason I do that is because I'm going to, I don't want to add life ships if they 
don't exist. What I mean by that is, let's say my lives go down to two. Well, I've already got three live shifts on the screen. If I don't remove them first, I'm gonna put one, two back, but if I don't remove this one, it's gonna look like it stays. So the easiest way to do this is to tell the computer, okay, we just lost a life. What we wanna do right now is we wanna get all of the life ships off the screen and redraw them. Here's how we do that. We say get world dot remove objects. And what we want to remove, and this is the complicated part, we say get world again, get objects of the life ship class. So there's a lot there, but you can see it compiles. What we're saying is we want to remove from the world all of the life ship objects. Okay, I'll, just, I'll show you that it works. I'm just gonna get hit by a bullet and watch, they should immediately disappear. There they go, okay? So that's great, we got them all to disappear, now we wanna put them back. Now I have code in my constructor here that I can copy and paste over to the enemy bullet. I'm gonna put it right there right after the lives have been affected. And here's my loop where I redraw, and I should be commenting as I go, but redraw the life ships. How many ships do I want? Well, I don't want three anymore, I want two. But I'm not always gonna want two. Sometimes I'll want one. The answer is I want this many. However many lives I have in the hero, that's how many I want. So I'm gonna put that right there. And this says I want to run this loop h lives times the number of lives a hero has. And here the only reason I'm getting an error is I have to go get world dot because I'm coding in the enemy bullet. I can't add a life ship to an enemy bullet. I can only add an object to a world. So I click off. No errors. Let's test it out. What you should see is I'll get hit by a bullet, one will disappear. There we go, and now another. And now the other one will disappear, but it'll go to the screen so fast you can't tell. And so now I've got this cool little life counter effect. And also I could add another life count. So you can imagine if my score gets above say 500 or 1000, you could add to the lives. So you could just add to this value right here. And every time you add to that value, it's automatically going to add another life ship to the screen. Okay, and that's simply done by running this code here that updates. And so a smarter thing to do for me, now that you've seen it, I'm gonna cut this code out. And I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna go public void update life ships. Oops, messed up my brackets. But what I'm doing is I'm making a method called update life ships. I'm going to copy it and put it right here. Now this has led me to a place I didn't really want to go, but I just realized, semicolon. Notice now it says, wait a minute, I don't know what H is anymore. And that's because H gets defined right here. So what we need to do now is we have to include a parameter. We have to say, okay, we're gonna update life ships, but we wanna pass through H as our parameter. And when I tell life ships the method, when I tell the update life, life ships method that a hero must be passed through, now it looks like it will work. So let's just make sure before we stop that this is working the same way. There's one, two, oh, did I get hit? 
two. There we go. Two. And we're done. Okay. So there you go. That's how you create that little effect and then make your own little method with a parameter. And pretty soon we should get rid of these ugly lose worlds and win worlds.